Hi there, welcome to episode 10 of So You Call Yourself a Decorator. This is officially uh, uh, midway through the whole month of um, May podcast. I have uh, been looking, we, not hi, <laughs> because I've not been the only one. We have been looking at the game plan in ensuring that you have a successful interior design or interior decorating business and this week we were going through <coughs> excuse me we're going through, we've been going through structuring our business for profit today we are going to be rounding up that particular step which is the third step of the game plan which is um so far we have looked looked at how to set up our business for the right way and covering all the basics trying to travel light as possible in the few first years of our business if you are just starting out we looked at visibility we looked at communicating yesterday we talked about um, getting ready for our clients that is onboarding um, new clients and today we will be rounding it all by looking at how we can protect ourselves or our brand so that we stick around for as long as time itself in this industry and don't get um, burned out uh, we don't get, um, we don't lose our steam, and have, have to close shop or, or look for another uh, line of business. Especially if this is truly, truly um, something that you're good at and something you want to build into a business that um, thrives and is successful. So, what do I mean by protecting our brand? All I, all, all I mean by that is. How do you um, do business in the marketplace without um, attracting um, the wrong kind of um, um, what's the name now? Attracting the wrong, the wrong kind of attention to you, um, managing the integrity of you, the business owner, and the business itself, um, staying focused and not being thrown around or destabilized by conflicts and, and should I am um, sorry not not should I had I known some because this is business business it's business itself is risky so we all ought to try as much as we can to protect ourselves and not open up our brand for um, avoidable um, incidents or accidents that could cause us our brand something like that so what do I mean by that? It means that number one, you should always um, try to manage your client's expectations. We have clients who come to us and want to have um, projects done that are that may be um, unachievable um, when we look at what we have available materials that we have readily available to carry out such um, projects there's some um, hi Damilala thank you for listening in live there's some um, pro- um, customers or clients that ask us for um, unachievable f- things for example um, we've noticed so uh, for, for a while now that a lot of the 3d rendered images online are Though they look nice and they look um, pretty and they look wow out of this world, a lot of them are not um, achievable. They are not design-wise. They are not. um, They are not going to be functional enough for um, what the client wants to achieve in their space. Hi, Aurelua Eunice. Thank you for joining in live. Um, So uh, you need to be able to manage your client expectations from the beginning so that you do not get to the point in the, in the project where your client uh, chooses to say um, withdraw from the project and then leaves you with so much expenses and damages to cover. So as soon as um, you are, you have um, how can I, the total idea of what your client wants, try to sit down with them or go over it with them any way you can and see which of them are lofty dreams that are not realizable and which of them are actually realizable, the ones that you can do. Do not promise and do not over promise and under deliver. It is going to be um, eating into your, your trust um, factor 
so fast i might even erode it at the end of the day um if you're into product sales managing your client expectations means um when people place order for your products um try as much as possible to help them understand what your product uh, your product does or what it's going to do for them so they can weigh it against what they want to achieve so that if it is not a win-win they can um, disengage at the beginning and not wait for your project to be uh, delivered and then they discover that it is a wrong match and then in trying to maybe um, refund money or return the the, um, the product there is now a conflict that would degenerate into something else i've seen it happen so many times and i think it is high, high time to let you know as an interior designer and interior decorator that you can actually protect yourself against that and it's just you trying to first if you are into product sales have better product um, description when your client places an order or your customer places an order for that product if you can give them a call and run them through the description of the product again so they know what they are getting um the reason why i'm saying this is if you're say if you're into the bedding business um when you put up your product pictures to market your product or to advertise your product most times they are usually a fully made bed with all the accessories the duvet covers the duvet and uh, the duvet inside the pillows and everything and sometimes you have some things on the bed maybe like a throw or um, a coverlet or something like that but or what you were what you had in mind to sell could be maybe say one of the um, categories or options of your product is duvet cover set so and that means that whoever is buying that product must already have a duvet insert to use with that set so when it when the other drops in one of the things you need to do is to to explain to the customer who placed that order that this is this set you ordered for is not a complete set you need to have a duvet insert even if you put it in your description still explain it to them because a lot of people do not read description um, extensively as they should they just um, skim over it and go to place order because they love what they see or what they saw so try as much as possible to bring them up to speed so that by the time you by the time you deliver such product it will not become a, a painful experience for both of you that's both you the seller and your customer the buyer so that being said mm -hmm. next thing you need to do is to give reasonable timelines whether you are into service into service based business or into product sales give reasonable timelines that some um, customers who will want you to do a job within a stiff timeline and you know that that job will not be completed but because you do not want them to work with your money or call the next person you tell them you will do your best or you do you you will be able to deliver at that um, time frame which will not happen and sometimes it might not even be it might even mean that it may be sorry that you do not even know maybe you because you're new in the business you didn't know that it would take you longer time than the time you think or you thought will, the, the project is going to take um, and then by the time you get into the, the project you discover that you cannot meet up try as much as possible before you go into such kind or such aspect of this business to do your research and make make your findings what goes into a full renovation um, if the client is going to be changing the floor says they want to change the floor and the ceiling um, the existing ceiling and the existing flooring in that space how long is it going to take you need to get all of those your um, work schedule or timelines or you have to have them ready before your clients will ask you for or before you get a client that, that needs that kind of job done so that if they come to you and tell you oh we want this job done say in five days or in one week and you know that only the flooring and the ceiling alone is going to take you two weeks you will know that you just need to tell them or break it down to them as um professionally as you can you're the expert they should be able to listen to you and tell them why it will not be ready for that time do not take on a job thinking that oh by the time they to see that we have not finished no especially when you're going when you're working with um um the commercial or the corporate clients it is going to cost you money and it is going to cost you your um business brand you you definitely not be called for the next round of say projects or contract they might want people to bid for so try as much as possible to do for um deliveries for those in products it has to do with your delivery timeline um if you already have your product on ground you already um you're, you've already stocked your pro, pro, product 
how long will it take you to deliver to say your people in your location people outside of your location you need to put that into uh, consideration before you put your sales or your product ad out there so that when people place order and they tell you can i get it the next day you'll be able to know if it is achievable or not there are times that you might need you might you might need to go produce a particular product say um beddings now somebody places an order for a particular type of um, um fabric or design and you don't have it on ground it takes a minimum of one day depending on how busy the market is or during the peak period it takes a minimum of one day to get a particular that's especially when you're new if you're if you're um an, an existing um um let me use the word merchant you're an existing merchant of the bedding uh, set you will know how to wiggle and cut all the unnecessary waste of time but if you're new before you get a reasonable tailor before you get before your tailor will, will, will not there are some tailors that when you give jobs to they keep it aside to do other jobs especially if you stay in lagos i've seen um there were times that when i go to the market to produce my um or uh, my customers orders i've added it over to the tailor but because i had other things to do in the market i still stay around i'm still around trying to do some say maybe window shopping or even proper shopping itself and then i see my tailor shadowing that's what i call that's what as a uh, slang they shadowing new customers that have walked into the market because they actually make a cut if they take a customer from the, that just arrived in the market into somebody's shop to buy from so they follow these customers into other people's shop and try to market number one um if they are able to get the, uh, the customers to buy from that shop the owner of the shop or the seller the owner of the product is, has a cut he has to give them and secondly because they are tailors they are looking for people to give them jobs to do so they, is a, they, the person is trying to um earn in two ways one from the extra amount for bringing customers to your shop secondly it gets to um, make either the curtain or the bed, bed sheet that the person buys and all of that so you need to until you're 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 smart enough and you are you are not not not, not really necessarily smart enough until you are um seasoned enough in the business you need to give um room for those kind of um time wastage that your your team <laughs> that are working with you are going to take from delivering that product so give reasonable timelines um if you're just if you're new try if it's, if the people who are ordering are in your location try to give say two to three working days if it's outside of your location you can say three to five working days something like that it's just a tip that you can use okay and next you need to choose your team carefully it's actually what i just explained now um if you're new you're still trying to work based on other people's referral or you scouting the market for artisans and tailors and all of those that you'll be needing to work with you depending on what you do in this industry so choosing your team carefully the reason why, why i i'm saying this is because you're going to be responsible for whatever goes wrong either with the customer's order or with the customer's project you cannot tell your customers that oh i'm sorry it was my it was the tailor that i gave it to or i'm sorry it was the tailor that did this or i'm sorry it was the carpenter that did this no you have to own up you have to own your uh, you have to be able to to take all the responsibility of whatever goes wrong and goes right with a project or with an order which is that is why you need to choose your um team carefully hi babs kim thank you for listening in live we've been talking about um protecting our brand in the business in the marketplace as interior designers and decorators and i've, I've mentioned how, that you should mention your client sorry you should manage your client expectation you should give reasonable timelines you should uh, choose your team carefully next thing i need to talk about is on partnerships and collaborations you want to go one of the easiest way for you to grow and um bring more customers or be popular in the marketplace is when you partner with other people or you go on collaborative feats with people and on this particular note or on this particular reason for this particular reason you need to try as much as possible to make it official especially if you have a relationship with a person outside of that business make it official when you don't have relationship with the person it's easier for you to say no we must sign contract or we must sign um term M M M M mou and all of that if the person is your loved one your parent your sibling your in-laws whoever they may be your friend or even your somebody that you look up to in the industry say your mentor or somebody that is coaching you sign an agreement it will save you a lot of um 
bickering and uh, conflict resolution in the, in the in the future it will help both partners or both or, or the people involved know who is responsible for what and what happens if if anything goes wrong so try as much as possible to make it official then um lastly i'm going to talk about how you should how you are um you should how you should stop um losing money in this business I, I, I usually say to, uh, you're leaving money on the table and that is um, especially if you are in the service um, aspect there are times that you people call on you and they run their design needs by you and then you go because you are enthusiastic and because you want to help you go all out and you start dishing out um, all your concepts and design I'm not saying don't do that but I'm saying that even if you have to do that you do not hand over your designs or your concept to a client that has not committed one naira to the project try as much as possible to advise them or talk over talk over the the project with them show them pictures um, explain what and what you think is wrong and how you can get it right but when they start asking you to give them a visual representation of what you mean or what you're proposing to do for them that is when you should get them to commit first because if you do not, especially with residential um, customers, if you do not, you have lost that customer. It will take your design or she will take your design. Get um, artisans, especially those who, who, have, who have over the years worked with different kinds of artisans. Get artisans to um, come look at the concept you've given them and the, the, the work will start without you. I have lost um, countless of project in this way even um, sending artisans to go to a client's place to go do say take measurements or go um, because <clears throat> they, they, they they need so most times I like especially when it has to do with um, the more technical stuff I like the vendors or the artisans I'll be using to be present in the site before we start the job so that if there if if there's anything that I have missed out when I was in my site visitation and my observation and all of that they can pick it up and then we can compare notes and then the work can start there are times that you have such artisans go and if fortunately for the artisan the person or the customer happens to be one of East tribe member <laughs> they speak the same language you are going to that that what well, somehow somehow Basically, to me, I feel it's an integrity issue. I've have, I've, I have other artisans that I send out, say, maybe to go um, deliver a project that we've done or maybe go f complete a project, and I'm not there physically to supervise. And people who are around the vicinity walks up to them and say, oh, I love what you guys did here. Can you please help me? Can you, do so? can we, can you come and do something similar? Or I have something for you to do for me. And I've, they, 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 they will call me up right there and then and tell me, oh, there's a potential customer here who walked, in, who walked up to us. Would you want to talk to the person or should we talk to the person? And even if they talk to the person, maybe take the person's um, um, design needs or answer the person's question they get they get measurement and all of that and the person is asking them for a quote they keep the I, they, I, I at least there's a particular person that I, that, I, that I know my carpenter he would tell the person that it is only my boss that can do that I will pass a, a pass over or pass on your message and everything that all the measurement I've taken she will get back to you get the person's contact and I'll pick it up from there but you can't always have loyal workers you can't always have loyal team members like that so you need to be careful so that you're not you're not um setting yourself up to be um duped or uh, like a cheated so, so to speak all right so i've said all i that you need to see today under protecting your brand i've talked about managing your um, customers expectation given reasonable uh, timelines choosing your team carefully um making sure that you set up a proper um, contract or terms and conditions or MOU when you're going into partnerships and collaboration. Um, and then I talked about having your customer or your client to uh, make a com commitment before you hand over design, um, design prints, so to speak, to them. So you need to choose your delivery service wisely if you are into um, product delivery and you have to be careful when giving out pay on delivery offers.
the times are changing especially in nigeria so do not endanger your life by doing that and at the same time um, if you notice that pay on delivery orders to some certain locations do not favor you try as much as possible to explain to customers from that region and ask them to make a commitment so that you don't keep losing money um, like that all in all ensure that your customers truly understand what they are getting by working with you or by coming to you to do something for them so that is all i will be stuck that, that i have to say today and the, today ends um the third step of the game plan which is structure your business for profit next week monday we begin the fourth step which is attracting our ideal clients and, in, and it gets really really interesting from there on we have just um two weeks left with this um daily podcast and for the by the end of may we'll be done with um so you call yourself an interior decorator if you are an interior designer or an interior decorator listening to me today and you have you haven't joined our community this is an invitation to you to please join us come on over to the business school for interior decorators there's a link attached to this podcast just click on it and it takes you directly click on join and that is all it is free but your business will thank you for it so if you're catching the replay let me know if you're an interior designer or interior decorator those who are listening in live who joined in live they've all gone so but i'm still going to say thank you to you and your bullet damilola thank you Aurel Lua, eunice and babs kim for joining me live and for those of you that catch the replay thank you also i'll see you 2 p.m on monday do have a rewarding and restful weekend bye for now <music>